all the videos are shown in real time. This is my RGB time fountain. By using RGB LEDs to strobe the water, I can make it appear coloured, and by strobing the red, green and blue at specific times, some very cool effects can be achieved. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to take good videos of my time fountain, because the strobing lights cause the flickering and scrolling lines you see in the video. This is due to the rolling shutter on my camera, the frame rate it's capturing video at, and the rate of the strobe causing the sensor to get varying amounts of light each frame. After building my time frame, I wondered what effects it would have had if I'd used RGB LEDs. So I programmed an Arduino to strobe an RGB LED strip to test the effect. Here you can see me testing the RGB LED strobe on a motor that has some tape on it. It worked how I imagined, so I decided to apply the principle to a time fountain as I'd never seen it done before. I did some research to see if I could find any information about building one and if any similar projects existed. I came across Levitating Waters, which is a commercially available time fountain that uses white LEDs. I also found Aquarius, which used individually addressable RGB LEDs to strobe a stream of water that vibrates side to side, forming a sine wave. The links are available in the description. These fountains all utilise the stroboscopic effect to create their illusions. They have a cyclic motion which is either regular water drops or the side-to-side -side motion of the stream and a strobe light tuned to the frequency of the cyclic motion. When the frequency of the strobe is the same as the motion, the water will appear to be levitating. If the strobe rate is lower, then the water will appear to be falling slowly and if the rate is higher, then the water will appear to be rising. When I put a glass in the fountain, the drops appear to rise out of it, yet it still gets filled with water. Here you can see me touching the levitating red, green and blue drops of water. To design my time fountain, I had to do a lot of testing to get consistent water drops. I tested various lengths of tubing, different sized nozzles, restricting the pump intake and the pump's voltage. I found the best results were achieved with a diaphragm pump that had a short piece of tubing and no nozzle on the pump's outlet. I found that restricting the intake of the pump helped to keep the drops more stable and prevented small drips from randomly appearing. Running the pump just below its recommended 12 volts also helped slightly. The drops formed at a rate of about 55 per second. This meant the strobing frequency would be around 55 Hz, which is acceptable as the human eye won't notice flickering at this frequency. I needed a way to prevent the drips from splashing water everywhere when they landed, so I designed and 3D printed a funnel with an anti-splash chamber which was filled with part of a stainless steel scourer. I also wanted the funnels to look like portals from the game Portal, so I designed them to hold LEDs that would light a ring of frosted acrylic in orange and blue. When I was happy that I had all the parts of the system working how I wanted, 
I designed a case to fit them all. It had three sections. At the top is the pump, microcontroller and electronics. In the middle is where the water drops will be seen, so it has the RGB LED strip lights. The bottom section houses the reservoir and power jack. The tubing and power wires run up the inside corner of the casing. Having the electronic components at the top of the fountain reduces the chance of any water getting on them and damaging them. I wanted to be able to easily access the reservoir to empty and refill it, so I designed and 3D printed a bracket with magnets in to hold the panel in place. As this was just a prototype, I wanted to access the electronics as well, so I used the same mechanism for the top panel. Because there are so many possible modes and options to alter the effects, I decided controlling them with Bluetooth via a mobile app was the best solution. This means there doesn't need to be any knobs or buttons on the fountain itself. I'm very happy with how my time fountain turned out and how it works. It's just what I imagined it to be, although a lot more work than I initially anticipated, but well worth it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if you like my projects, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Here are some more videos of the different display modes it has.